After speaking to us in tongues and giving us romantic ballads, Joji's latest album Nectar plants the seeds for where he wants to take us to next with what I think is his most accomplished work of art yet. But what do the songs mean, and how do we explain the cryptic space timeline in his music videos? Well, with 18 new tracks, let's dive into what they sing about and start with the first track, which is fittingly titled, Ew. When it's lovely, I in anything. Like most of Joju's discography, Eel details his conflicted views on love with a girl that he has bittersweet feelings towards, as the interpretation of the word has likely something to do with the Vietnamese word you, which is pronounced similar to the word eel, but instead actually means love or to love. So perhaps this is a double meaning of how Joji feels that love can be both beautiful and ugly at the same time, or at least has been with this girl or with past experiences. But I also feel like this name fits in with why the album itself is called Nectar, as according to Joji in an interview that asked him about the meaning of Nectar, Joji answered by describing how it came to him from a disturbing experience he had with witnessing a colony of ants that had frozen to death with his freezer after becoming trapped while trying to get his ice cream, an experience that left him asking, what would you be willing to do for your Nectar? To me, this is a haunting way of reflecting on the risks that you'd be willing to take when it comes to finding what you need or want in life, and in the context of Joji's music, is about the things that you would want to do when it comes to finding love. A dark lesson of realizing that love is a double-edged sword, something that we all need, but they can also kill us. Just like seeing living creatures die because of something they craved and needed. Love that which can be both beautiful and ugly, just like the nectar for the ants that can both give you life and purpose, but also can lead you to death and destruction. The chorus adds to this bittersweet feeling, with Joji describing his own feelings towards someone who has taught him what love is, only to then just let him go, further echoing those same notions mentioned before about how Joji has experienced both sides of feeling alive when he's in love to then feeling like dying when his heart gets broken. This is something difficult for Joji to cope with as he goes on to add how he can't believe that he's not enough for this girl, a line that continues to emphasize his heartbreak and difficulties in realizing why exactly he can't be with this girl as he still genuinely feels like he deserves to be with her. And perhaps this is why Joji chose to include images of molten lava flowing for the lyric video of this song which suggests that like lava, love is both beautiful and dangerous at the same time, further emphasizing just how spectacular and powerful being in love feels to Joji but also how he's afraid of it at the same time because he knows of the dangers that can come with it. Quietly still in a light. Oh, good night. I don't mind. These images are also a nice connection or nod to the cover art for the song Run when it initially came out as a single, that shown arm being encapsulated by the lava, again suggesting how Joji feels like he's drowning in this pit of despair after being attracted to this girl and her beauty, only to then realize that she's led him to his doom as he falls into this quicksand of molten lava. An interesting contrast of showing the beauty of love against the beauty of nature, both flowing with dangerous allure. Moving on, we next get a track called Modus, which sets into motion a theme about the most valuable commodity in a person's life, one that Joji is afraid of wasting on the wrong things and on the wrong people. Time. Speed it up, slow it 
In my opinion, this song refers to the broader idea of using time wisely and with the things that you really want to do. As the lyrics mention the constant pressures and overbearing controls Joji feels from those within the music industry. People who want to supervise Joji's time to make sure that he's not doing something that they wouldn't approve of. Because to them, Joji feels like a machine that they can just use and make money off. Which might be why the song is called Modus, as the definition not only hints to musical modes, but also refers to the immediate manner in which property may be acquired or a way in which anything is done. Maybe alluding to how those in the music industry feel like they can do whatever they want with Joji whenever they please, which is the standard way of how they do things to which Joji is only now just realizing. This would also explain why the lyric video shows what looks like to be either a film projector or a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder used for audio production, both of which fit in with that idea of how Joji feels like the people within the entertainment industry see him as just the machine and as someone that they can have total control over, just like a film projector or a reel-to-reel -reel tape recording machine that they can speed up, slow down, rewind and repeat, switch tapes or artists and do whatever they want with him because to them, Joji's not a human in their eyes, but rather an expendable tool to be used for the gain and purpose. Purposes. And I hope this is the hardest part We try, we try And when they say they're satisfied They're lying, they're lying Do forgive me, I've seen The treasures in the blue But right now I'm just not strong This theme of time continues with the next song called TikTok, which talks about Joji's chase for fame, which has come at the cost of maintaining a relationship where he feels like he's running out of time to fix things up with her. Although the music video for TikTok doesn't give much away that is related to the larger astronaut space law, there are a couple of minor points to mention to this. The first being the imagery of Joji riding inside a shopping trolley that's been decorated to look familiar to that of a spaceship or rocket, which is something that we know links back to what happens in Gimme Love and Sanctuary, suggesting that maybe this is a prequel to those events. But there's also a line within the second verse that goes with the spaceship imagery as Joji poses a question to a girl who he's fallen in love with and uses the phrase lift off in doing so. Again, to me this feels like a double meaning of liftoff, being the literal liftoff that we've seen from Joji blasting off in Gimme Love, but also with Joji's musical career taking off. But for the rest of the song, we get lyrics that further echo Joji's worry towards how much time he has left with this girl. As time keeps slipping away, girl don't start feeling away, you and I we are one in the same, loving and pain. These lyrics remind me of the imagery that we saw in Test Drive with Joji's concerns around time slipping away with someone and how in that music video we could see him holding a watch that fell out of his hands. In other words, the same symbolism of time slipping away. So maybe the fear of being in love with someone not only comes from the worry of heartbreak itself, an experience that Joji knows all too well and that still haunts him, but also the fear that comes from dreading when that would actually happen, as this song shows how Joji is always mindful of enjoying every minute he can with this person, whilst still worrying about how much time he has left if the worst were to happen, a ticking clock that looms over his head. We next get the song Daylight, a song that talks about Joji's thoughts towards someone in the past that he can't move on from. Wide 
Preoccupied with the late night B-roll Right now laying here alone is heaven The chorus of this song seems to hint that Joji is out on the town and calling out to this person, an image that we already know from before with songs like Yeah Right and Slow Dancing in the Dark, and now with Daylight, which sings about how he refuses to go home at night and implies just how determined he is to see her instead, because he doesn't want to stay up waiting for her till daylight and isn't willing to pack it in to call it a night and go home to lay in bed with his troubled thoughts of her in his head. Bad luck, I don't wanna be on that To me, this imagery feels very typical of someone who's drunk texting in Old Flame who would message with a classic line asking you up and of someone who's just been dumped but hasn't really moved on themselves. So they decide to go out and try to forget them, drinking heavily to numb the pain which doesn't really help with the problem because their thoughts once again drift back to where they'd rather be and who they'd rather be with. Feelings and thoughts that haunt Joji the morning after. Sun dried on the backyard patio, drunk guys cause I didn't give it but looking at the video, we see a somewhat different scene because instead of a nightclub type of atmosphere, we instead get a flashy music video set with Joji who appears to be helping out on the set in a behind the scenes sort of role and who ends up fighting with old men who seem to be the stars of this video. In my opinion, these fights with the old men who don't give him attention could be symbolic with one sense of how Joji feels like fighting to earn back their attention from this girl who like the old men don't care about Joji or what he wants. But it's also something that reminds me of Joji's fight with the music industry that we've mentioned before, with his flashy music scene acting as an image that represents everything he hates about the industry, with older men who go to such extremes to look younger, but begin to instead look quite fake and not even human, from the heavy amount of Botox that they use, to the bizarre clothing that they wear to draw attention, and to having their lips filled to look as ridiculously big, all of whom try to shun him away from the limelight or daylight, reflecting how the music industry has a tendency to focus attention on those who on the surface appear to have talent and look young, while not giving the due credit to those who actually work hard in the background, ultimately a satire of those who are still trying to remain relevant and wanting to continue to be in the spotlight by whatever means necessary such as wearing ridiculously flashy outfits or getting as many surgeries done to appear both young and fresh in order to maintain their fame, all of which Joji is against. But it's the ending that's the most interesting as we see Joji waking up and returning to a place that looks like an abandoned planet. Wake up. In my view, he seems to be stranded here alone and is at the very start of his journey after leaving Earth and Give Me Love, with him now starting afresh on this new planet. And in comparison to Ron, which had a literal station of sorts with several different rooms that kept him alive, we can see that here, there's not much around Joji to help him to survive as he only has a tent and a few pieces of equipment. But this brings me to suggest that Daylight might actually take place after Run, as while initially I had thought that the ending of Run placed Joji on a new planet, which could still be the case, I'm actually under the impression that Joji there was still on a spaceship flying to somewhere, as you can see in the final shot, the background of stars and of controls and buttons that look similar to what you'd see on a flight navigation panel. So maybe what we see in Daylight is after Run, when Joji has landed upon this new planet, and is also why we see him plant a seed at the very end, the beginning of a new life.
Next we get the track Upgrade, a song that talks about Joji asking a girl to be with him as he suggests that she should consider upgrading to be with him. Won't you upgrade? I know it hurts. You deserve it. I know you're worth. If you think you can make it happen, we'll keep it optional. Keep these lyrics imply that this girl is already with someone that Joji isn't a fan of and that she should upgrade to having someone better in her life like him because he knows how much she's worth, even if she doesn't always see that. I've also seen a few people mention that there might be a connection to Joji eating donuts from here back to the music video for TikTok, which might suggest that these two characters are the same, but I think it's more of a nice nod to one of the producers for this album who are also called The Donuts. Yes, I'm flying international. We can meet, but no more lies at the Oriental. Hey, hey. Now I'm so professional. I just need you one more time to get it right, you know. The line about flying international fits with what we see in the music video, with Joji on board a plane flying to a place to be with this girl. But as we can see, apart from the cabin crew, Joji is alone on this journey, looking outside his window at the sun setting, almost like he's pondering whether or not this girl will end up choosing to be with him. We don't make sense, we don't make sense, we don't make sense enough to give this time. But if you'll be mine, we'll keep it optional. To me, this person might also be the same one that we saw in Gimme Love, who Joji confirmed in an interview was actually this character called Dr. Wallace. Because if it is him, it fits in with this idea of someone who's quite important or always busy with work, to the point where their working life would put a strain on their relationships. So maybe this is Dr. Wallace, somewhere before the events of Gimme Love, thinking about how although he's had great success with his career taking off, he constantly feels under the pump and in a flight of stress, looking out and perhaps wishing that he had chosen to stay more grounded to be with this person who we can't make time for. And while we're on the topic of Dr. Wallace, I want to mention that one of the teaser trailers for Nectar also gave us more clues and context to what occurred in the music videos for Gimme Love, Sanctuary and Run. In one of the teasers, we see Dr. Wallace watching a team of scientists discussing what appears to be some sort of issue, presumably linked with the plans of that rocket ship in that video. When we then see Joji deciding to pack his things and leave in a rush, wandering outside and looking out towards the planes flying by. To me, this suggests a sort of prequel to Gimme Love and Upgrade, with Dr. Wallace coming to a sudden realization that he needs to leave Earth, with him looking towards those planes flying high and perhaps dreaming of him too flying away from this planet, which he eventually does. But interestingly, this teaser also suggests a new reason as to why Dr. Wallace leaves Earth, not only from the metaphors that we've seen in previous volumes about wanting to leave past toxic relationships and the growing focus towards taking off with his musical career, but also that there seems to be a sort of disease that has infected his team, seen only in glimpses in Gimme Love. Which finally brings me to addressing this question, what is the deal with this purple goo? As it seems to be a substance that is the source of whatever disease has infected his team, and appears to be something Dr. Wallace's team were using while working working on the rocket ship, with how we can see images of them handling barrels that shine a bright purple light. The very same bright purple light that was also released in another teaser for this album. Wake up. From their appearance in Gimme Love, we can see that soon after the team handles the barrels that contain the purple-like substance, the team start experiencing some dangerous side effects, with images of people bleeding from their face, losing limbs, and even being sent to hospital. So 
What the hell is this thing? Well, it's hard to say exactly, but in my opinion, it might be that of the radioactive element called curium, which is known to emit a purple colour, especially in the dark, and would also explain the serious side effects that we see within Dr. Wallace's team because of the radioactive nature of this substance. It might also be another reason why Dr. Wallace decided to leave Earth, perhaps from the fears that this substance would accidentally be released to the public or even be weaponized by others. But interestingly, it might also have something to do with a purple or pinkish crystal that we see in Sanctuary, which as I explained in another video, was a symbol of Joji's past life with the infamous character that he once played. So perhaps this is a nice way of suggesting that just like how toxic and cancerous that character felt for Joji, this radioactive element is also a source of toxicity and cancer for Dr. Wallace. Moving on, we next get a song called High Hopes that changes perspectives by providing a glimpse at blissful optimistic expectations early on in a relationship where Joji already has high hopes for this girl compared to past experiences. Interestingly, the lyric video might also have something to do with this theme as it seems to be showing magnets and chains that have been placed in honey, maybe symbolizing the attraction Joji feels with this girl with the added worry that it might not end well because like an ant that's been caught in honey, the magnets are suffocating in the nectar. Hopeful ambitions that are exactly just that, wishful thinking. A little messed up, do you feel it? A little bit of this and a little bit of that She wanna know which way I'm in this feeling continues with the next song called Nitrous that seems to expand on high hopes by really kicking the relationship with this girl up a gear and explains why it might also be called Nitrous, which refers to nitrous oxide gas that is used to accelerate motor vehicles. The image of motor vehicles also explains what we see for the lyric video, which shows a car speeding down a long highway. But there's also lines where Joji constantly mentions that he doesn't want to slow down, that he wants to be loved more than just on the surface, because right now he's feeling butterflies in his stomach that are so loud that his insides sound like that of a motorcycle. An interesting point where for the first time in a while, Joji feels like a Range Rover, unbreakable, at least when he's with this girl. Next we get the song Pretty, a track that continues those feelings of fleeting happiness by describing Joji's newfound success and lifestyle on the west coast in LA with what's presumably lines about him partying it up in Beverly Hills. I'm a pretty boy living on the west side
Lyrics that mention taking blue pills and sipping on the expensive drinks suggest that Joji is again going back to numbing the pain with substance abuse and alcohol, with the blue pills likely referring to either Viagra, the common male sexual enhancement drug, Zoloft, an antidepressant, or Xanax, a mild tranquilizer, since each drug is commonly linked to those who enjoy living a lavish lifestyle that this song speaks about, people that are rich with wealth and fame and who enjoy surrounding themselves in a party-like environment whenever they can. As a young man, never pull up on time Looking in a mirror, looking good should be a crime But interestingly, it's the last two pills of Zoloft and Xanax that were also mentioned in Joji's song Pills from the EP In Tongues. So maybe this isn't just a nice tie back to that album, but it's also suggesting how Joji is relapsing back into that abusive state that he once was in. An intoxicated state that could have been triggered by the relationship with the girl from before in Upgrade and in High Hopes, which has now come to an end. Further continuing Joji's struggles with searching and maintaining a healthy relationship with someone who could feel as strong for him as he does for them. One of the themes from this album and his whole discography so far. But coming back to the music video, the people that we see are the same ones that we saw in Daylight, so what could all of this mean? Well in my opinion, the most obvious reason for including them is that again, these are people who look incredibly superficial and fake, which reflect that same fake lifestyle that this song talks about. People who focus so much on projecting a certain exterior image to the world and aren't really worried about who they really are on the inside. Which goes for the same for how this song aims to convince us that Joji seems happy or pretty, when in reality, we know that this is just a facade. I've also seen theories that these characters could be aliens or used to be human before some sort of disease or virus infected them and changed their appearance as hinted at with what happens in Gimme Love and the purple goo. And while I can see the link between how artificial these people look as a symbolic idea of how artificial this type of lavish lifestyle is and the people who live it are, I still think it's stretching to say that these could be aliens or were infected by some sort of virus. But having said that, there does seem to be some sort of connection between these characters and what happens in Gimme Love. The first being with the teaser video released before this music video called FTC, which shows the same characters in the same setting, but interestingly included clips of what looks like a container or package that belongs to the UN. A UN connection that can also be seen for what each character is wearing around their neck, with lanyards that hold what looks to be a UN ID badge that again seems very familiar to what we saw in Gimme Love. So what does this all mean? Do these characters have a bigger part to play when it comes to the Dr. Wallace timeline? I'm not sure, but if anyone has any ideas or connections, please let me know down below. But for now, it's time to move on to the next track called Normal People. The devil came back, he's dancing in your past, so you're acting like you need me now. Hey. So tell me if I'm mad, there's something in your life that makes me feel the way you smile. In my view, Normal People continues to build upon one of the arcs from this album of a relationship with a girl with what we saw in Daylight with Joji talking about fighting to still be with this girl who's moved on from him to then reminding her that she deserves to be with someone better like him in Upgrade to now singing about how she's finally starting to act like she needs him now. But the song also tells us that Joji finds all of this hard to believe as her sudden change of heart feels strange to him as he goes on to sing about how he's not sure if he's crazy or not and questions the way that this girl laughs and smiles which makes him fearful that she might be hiding something from him. That her now wanting him is just an act that she's putting on. It's hard to believe sometimes We can pretend we're normal people And I can repeat those times We can pretend we're boring people the chorus reaffirms such ideas by talking about how it's hard for Joji to believe that her newfound feelings for him could really be true. Even though at the same time, Joji is thinking that he might be happier believing in this facade and pretending like everything's okay. A case of where he wants this girl so much that he's willing to love the way she lies. The second verse also has some interesting connections to the Dr. Wallace timeline, with the mention of Joji feeling like he's on a new planet, an image that we already know fits in with what happens at the end of Run and in Daylight. But this term also feels like a double meaning of Joji starting afresh with this new relationship and him trying to sow the seeds of their love in their early days as he goes on to describe how they've planted the seeds of their new love which is everything he always wanted. Behind 
The mention of covalence is a nice reference to a type of atomic bonding in chemistry called covalent bonding, which are bonds that occur between non-metal elements and work through the sharing of electrons between atoms, which is a sentiment that I feel like explains that line about how this girl's fragrance or smell has attracted Joji to her, just like an atom that's been covalently bonded to another atom, sharing their electrons together just like they share their love for one another. But what's especially different about this song is the choice of images used for the lyric video which show an extreme close-up of what looks to be frog embryos as you can see the early stages of their faces and bodies just before they are born. To me, this again symbolizes one of the themes of this album about starting new and planting the seeds that will hopefully grow and blossom into something bigger, just like the frog embryos that are growing and which is also emphasized by the comment pinned on YouTube for the video by the artist Ray Brown who featured on this track. But in the context of this song in particular, it could be reaffirming the start of this new relationship with this girl and one that is in a delicate balance just like the frog embryos who are almost ready to enter the world but whose lives are still at risk as they hang in the balance while waiting to be born not to mention who will then face the challenge of surviving whatever lies ahead in the real world ultimately suggesting how joji sees his potential life with this girl a bittersweet feeling of hopeful ambition with the promise of a new life and a new relationship but one that joji is worried could be taken away just as easily as it came to fruition She said, Mr. Hollywood, won't you come back soon? She said, Mr. Hollywood, won't you come back soon? Next, we get a song called Mr. Hollywood, which talks about a girl calling for Joji to return to be with her, but he can't do so because he's away being preoccupied with his newfound success. Too busy being Mr. Hollywood. Joji is aware of this girl's feelings and of being too caught up with fame at the expense of his relationships, so he sings that he wants to be better than what he's done in the past and what he's currently doing to her. He emphasizes that he's trying hard to not lose sight of what's important to him despite his stardom and he wants to be there for relationships both with her or with his friends and family which he knows deep down gives him the real fulfillment and success in life that he needs. By the way you move, I know you want me to Tell you all the rules I know I'm searching to Give me all your clues and things to guide me through The end of the world, the end of the world don't blow out the fuse when darkness comes to light So much I could do to make you come to life Fingers coming loose, I see there's no more time Don't tell me I'm gone, don't tell me I'm gone in contrast to these feelings, we next get the song called Triple Seven, which speaks about Joji's troubled past experience with a no-strings-attached relationship. We were never the same, are you out of your mind? I don't like strings, no, no ties. I don't want to keep you dreaming, you waste your time. I don't need strings, no, no lies. Here we have lyrics that seem to be voicing back the words of a girl who told Joji that she didn't want any strings with him because she never wanted to lead him on. An arrangement that maybe Joji was initially happy with, but eventually regretted. When I pretend that I'm your boyfriend, I'll pour the drinks so don't annoy me. Are you lonely? Cause I'll be gone to the next when the sun's up. Blame it on me, you can blame it on me. Feeling your touch and I'm feeling so sweet. Hey. Blame it on me. Like 
Joji goes on to mention how he will pretend to be this girl's boyfriend, but he clearly isn't happy about doing so, while also still wondering if she'll change how she sees him, getting annoyed with her one second, but then wondering if she's lonely the next. A constant back and forth that isn't what Joji really wants. You needed something to believe in 200 miles in the evening Super speeding Are you leaving right now? This notion of feeling powerless continues to the next song called Like You Do, which talks about Joji realizing that him and this girl might be heading down different directions in their lives. Lately, I can't help but think that our roads might take us down different faces. Don't wanna complicate the rhythm that we got, but I'm speechless. When everything's so pure, can it be painless? Joji goes on to sing about how he'll listen to their songs after she leaves him, which in turn will become bittersweet lullabies because they will be the same songs that will remind him of her, remind him of their time together and the love that they once felt. Again, a bittersweet feeling from hearing the songs that he once used to like, but then how those same songs will later be a reminder of the tragic outcome of their relationship. If you ever go, all the songs that we like will sound. also adds to this powerless feeling by speaking volumes about the pain Joji feels within this situation, as he sings about how emotionally attached he is to this girl since she was the only one he couldn't lose and how she loved him like no one else had. Since I met you All the gloomy days just seem to shine a little more brightly Consider what we've got cause I can never take you for granted We also get a mention of Joji talking about a planet in the second verse, except that here, it's more of a way of telling this girl of his fears that there might not be someone else on this planet who could emulate and reflect the same love that they once had, as she was the only one that made his gloomy days feel brighter, because to Joji, this girl was the light of his life. album on an epic melody, we come to the song called Your Man, which describes Joji comforting a girl from a recent breakup by singing that it'll be her new man. Have you ever loved? We should go again. Don't be down when it's over, baby. Yeah. I'll be your man. Oh, man. Have you ever loved? 
but it's the video that provides more questions than answers as we watch what seems to be an astronaut dancing robotically through deserted places, and who at the end is revealed not to be Joji, but rather a humanoid-like alien that reminds me of the engineer character from Prometheus. In my view, this explains the bizarre robotic-like dancing, which looks more like artificial intelligence or an alien attempting to portray themselves off as a human, which also might be why when this video came out, Joji tweeted videos of robotic dogs that just like the music video, show their attempts to replicate natural dog behavior in an effort to assimilate with us humans, but that clearly still comes across as alien and foreign. Some have also suggested that this figure could actually be Joji, or at least was once Joji slash Dr. Wallace, because of a photo posted by Joji sometime near the music video of him putting on what appears to be makeup and a mask similar to that of this figure. While this might be a potential clue to indicate that something happened to Dr. Wallace on his journey through space, something that may have transformed him into something else, I can't say definitively if this is the case, and we'll have to wait and see if any more music videos or clues will reveal more on this. But the ending also shows us 14 more comets flying through the atmosphere, presumably implying that more of these figures will be crashing down on Earth. And this could be a nice hint that there will be 14 more music videos released from this 18 track album, excluding the ones that were released at the time of Your Man coming out, which included Sanctuary, Run, Gimme Love, and then Daylight. But it also might be suggesting that there will be an invasion on Earth of those that are disguised to look like us, and maybe even replace us, like this figure. And if so, this might also explain the title of a previous track two songs before called Reanimator, as a suggestion that humankind will be reanimating themselves to not only look differently, like the images of the characters seen in Daylight and in Pretty Boy, but to actually be different. Perhaps reflecting Joji's thoughts on the future of humankind, in that this doesn't necessarily have to be an invasion of aliens from another planet, but rather an invasion that will come from humankind itself, as we continue to become better, not just at designing artificial intelligence and integrating robotic machines within our society, but also that we ourselves might one day upgrade to become just like these machines, either as cyborgs or even coded computer algorithms. Algorithms. Could this be one of those reasons Dr. Wallace decided to leave Earth from what we saw in Gimme Love to Sanctuary and then to Run as an attempt to escape the threat of artificial intelligence? Or did he come across a humanoid alien somewhere along the way who decided to steal his spaceship and leave him on another planet, only to then replace him as they found their way back to Dr. Wallace's home on Earth? I don't know, and I'd only be speculating if I was to say otherwise, although I hope only time and more music videos will reveal more answers. But for now, we'll have to leave this album the way we entered it, on a bittersweet note of hopeful promise for the future, with a haunting fear looming in the background of where we will end up next. This was Nectar. Ha <laughs> <laughs>